just a very simple code. It's not anything like best practices or anything that we probably put production yet, but just to get something started. So if you look at my packages JSON, I'm using certain things. I've got certain dependencies that my application is using. Here's Express. Jade is the template. I'm just going with Jade because it's just the default. So Jade is like the template that I'm using right now instead of like you know React or something like that. Um, I'm using tunnel SSH as a, uh, a middleware found that I'm using to do the SSH connection so that we can actually hit the database. And I'm using MySQL 2. What's that? No, 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 no. MySQL 2 is another node module that I imported in here. And I'm using that to make the database connection. Actually, I'm not using this one anymore. I'll take this out. I'm using this, there's like a bunch of them out there, yeah. And I, this one worked better for me, so I used the SSH2. Um, I'm using NodeMon, which is, uh, it, process, it, it wraps your, so wherever NodeMon is sitting, you, you download NodeMon as a module, it watches your files, and if they change, it restarts the node process. So if you don't restart the node process, your, your web page isn't going to change. So you'll see that happen in a second here when I start running the website and make changes to like the template. The website will refresh because NodeMon has been watching, oh, you changed the template. Let me restart <coughs> node, and that restarts the, the browser. So okay. um, so that's, that's my, my, my stuff I'm using. And, and right here, you're telling it, where do, where do I start? If Node says, okay, where do I you know, express this? Where do I even start to run your application? You tell it here. So server.js is like your main start place here for your code. <clears throat> so if I look at uh, server.js, we are, let me see what start. Let's start at, actually let's go back up to, uh, yeah, I guess we could start here. So right now it's just 3,000 hard codes I can test with it. Because I'm actually setting up WebStorm to listen to that port. So WebStorm's configured to actually watch that port. So. So now, if you look at uh, the server, actually app.js, here we go. So app.js is a JS file that kind of, it sets everything, your views. It says, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set all these things first before I run my application. So I'm gonna set what view engine it is, you know, what my, how am I managing static content, where's the directory for that, all this <coughs> stuff. Where are my routes at? So it's saying app use routes. And this is, a, this is an actual route. When a route comes in, when a request comes in from the web, website, we're going to use just this one route. And that route is defined in um, here. See routes? So <coughs> here are your routes. And so when it hits this route, then you handle the route. And so right here, I'm actually hitting a SQL statement that I hard coded just to you know, test it. Um, so I hard coded this. And then here's where I'm actually calling um, you know, all the rest of the stuff, like SSH and all that stuff, to actually make the call to the database. So if you look at server, when, when you start this up, Node says, OK, go here. I'm looking for certain things to, like an applet, applet listen. So I'm going to run this, open a port, a Node port, and listen on this Node port for any requests. So right here is where uh, Express is actually creating an instance of that Node ACP server. And it's going to listen on that port for requests. So uh, if we go to, <coughs> I've got this config section here for database. So if you go to connection. This is kind of where, this is a quick and dirty, you know, function. So don't, don't look at this as anything pretty. But you go in here and you can send <coughs> the query in here. And here's the callback. It gives you your data back. Once it comes back from Node, the data comes back in here. So here's what I'm using the SSH client. So I'm actually importing this module that we brought down from NPM. I'm importing this guy. And so I'm setting up a connection using MySQL 2 here. And I've got a config. Let's get all the values here for what we're going to be using to authenticate. And so if we go back to um, uh, connect, so it's going to create an instance of MySQL 2, <coughs> SSH, start using it. Here's where it actually creates a connection to the server. And in that scope, while you're in that session, you can actually start doing your query stuff. So you can actually start using the MySQL um, connection, it'll actually work because you can pass through now, you have a tunnel. So we create an instance of that, send our query in, there's a query function on uh, the MySQL 2 module that you can use, it's a function here, and that's pretty much it. So it goes out and creates a database, callback comes back, and returns your roles here, which I call data. So if you actually go back to uh, uh, our route, so we're actually calling 
the invoke query, which is which is here and here, the connection here, invoke query. We we just called that. So now when he gets comes back with the data, he's back here, and uh, this is the callback comes back with the rows. So we take those that rows JSON object and we can bind it to our template. So we're going to render this Jade template here, and we said, hey, send it this view data. This is a JSON object here, and send it to here. And in here, I'm just saying, hey, in, in each co-brands, just print out the city. So it's pretty much that simple. And that's pretty much it to the application to connect and get data. So uh, if we run this with WebStorm, we can actually debug it. And WebStorm opens, it, it will hit the, um, <coughs> It'll hit the server JS, it'll run that listen, and now we have a node port open here, a node process listening on this port. And also what you could do is in the debug configuration, if you go to uh, set this up, you can say, hey, open the browser for me too. So if you go here, you can say, after you run it, launch Chrome with a debugger. So what happened is we should have seen a, a, a new tab open in Chrome. So if you go to Chrome, Somewhere in here, it should open a new tab. If it doesn't, you just gotta just restart it again. So I'll do that now, I guess. Oh, here, here it is. So in your, in your Chrome, there's an extension for, for uh, WebStorm that you install, so it knows to connect back to the WebStorm locally. Um, right now, this is connected to a debugging session. So if you look at uh, WebStorm, we've got two things. We've got the app that's running, the Node app, the, the server. We've also got a debug session that um, WebStorm maintains itself, you know, talks back and forth. So the nice thing about this is you can see, like so for example, when we ran this, we saw data, but how, what's cool in here is you can actually dig down in that stuff and actually see how it got there, any errors. So if I look at, um, usually I can see the JSON, in, yeah, hmm. usually I can see the JSON come right in here into this terminal, actually see the JSON yourself. So let me run this again. You should be able to see that. And you can also you know, step through your stuff here by set the deep debug points and stuff like that. So it'll actually hit those points, um, which is nice. Um, one second. So actually, go with the browser. You can actually do this too. If you refresh it, it should hit WebStorm again and relaunch your app, restart your process. So you can do that manually too if you want to. Um, I'm not saying that, I don't know why. But usually you'll see the JavaScript or the JS JSON come right, right in your window here. You can actually see what's coming back to the, to the, from the server. If not, you'll get a, an error in the debugger right here. You'll know that something happened. You can see it right here. The elements is, you can see here, you can see the, the HTML. So actually it's live. So if you change the, here you go. So you actually see what you're seeing out in the browser. If you don't want to go to the browser, you can just look here if you want to too. So you can actually see it in this page, so the browser. So if you were to change something in a template, if I change this to be something valid and save it, NodeMon says, OK, you changed your file. This is what happens in the web page. So if you go back here, you should see the same thing happen. Should have, oh yeah, so it updated this and said, hey, it's, uh, it's in some object. I don't know what it is, but you're not using it right. 